newlyweds. Hey Sam, congratulations. I haven't seen you since you got married. How are things going? Uh, it's not like I thought her to be. Really? I thought you were in love with Cheryl. She seems like a wonderful person. Yes, she is, but... But what? She can't cook. <laughs> Please, don't laugh at me. I'm serious. She cannot cook. So what? Lots of people can't cook. No, you don't understand. I mean, she really can't cook. I mean, she tries, but she can't even cook rice or make toast without burning it. And she tries to make these special dishes, but they're just inedible. They're nothing at all like my mother used to make for me. Well, maybe it's just that you have to get used to her style. And maybe you should learn to cook. Ever thought of that? Me? Cook? Come on. That's a woman's job. Hey, hi Cheryl. Hey. I haven't seen you since you got married. Congratulations. Thanks. How are things going? Uh, well, not as, not as well as I thought. Well, what do you mean? I, I thought you were in love with Sam. Oh, well, I am. Well, he seems like a great guy. Oh, oh, he is. He is. But, well, but what? Well, I don't know. Well, he he's such a. Well, he's a klutz. A klutz. What do you mean? Well, you know, we bought an old house, mm -hmm. and it needs a lot of work. And well, I just assumed that. Sam knew how to fix things. He did. But, you know, he can't even change a light bulb. Oh, it's such a disaster. Oh, no. You know, I remember my, my father and my brothers, they all knew how to fix things and build things. And, well, why can't Sam? Well, I don't know. Well, maybe, Cheryl, that not all guys are good at that kind of stuff. And, mm. you know, have you ever thought about learning how to fix things yourself? Me? Yeah. Fix things? <laughs> Come on. That's a man's job. Always late. We've been waiting almost half an hour now. Where is Ginny? I don't know. I guess she's late again. You mean this has happened before? Yeah. All the time. Really? And this is the woman you are engaged to and planning to marry? Yes, of course. She's beautiful, she's kind. She's really a wonderful person, Dad, and I know she'll be a great mother. So what if she runs late sometimes? It's really not that big a deal. Okay, but being late is a sign of disrespect. It shows a lack of respect for other people, for commitments. It's a sign of a bigger problem. No, it's nothing like that, believe me. She's not disrespectful, she's just... um... Uh, disorganized. Disorganized? Well, let me make sure I understand. She's really this late all the time? Yes. To tell the truth, sometimes it's even worse. Well, like yesterday. We had an appointment at 5 o'clock to talk with the manager of the Prince Hotel. Where the wedding is going to be? That's a very important meeting. I know. So I arrived on time at 5. But Jin He didn't get there until almost 6. Actually... It was really embarrassing. But Dad, she didn't mean it. She said that... An hour late. I had no idea it was that bad. That is rude. That's very selfish. Very disrespectful. Have you talked to her about it? Of course I have. Over and over. But if I bring it up too often, she gets angry and tells me to relax. You are trying to help her with her problem and she gets angry at you. That's even more disrespectful. It's obvious that the problem is deeper than just being late. If you marry her, you are going to have a lot of trouble. <sighs> the Computer Nut Sweetie, do you know what day it is? Uh, excuse me, but I'm, I'm very busy right now. I have to answer this email. You forgot, didn't you? What? D did you say something? Can't you wait until tomorrow? I'm real busy right now. Ugh. Why, why are you sitting on my keyboard? Look what you've done. You forgot my birthday. Is it today? Really? Today? 
Let me check my appointment file on my computer. Please get off my keyboard. You don't have to check your computer file. My birthday is today. This is your wife talking to you. Do you need to check your computer file to see who I am? Okay, okay, I believe you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really, really sorry. Now, please get off my keyboard and, and I'll send you an email birthday card. Ugh! What is wrong with you? You spend all of your time with your computer. Do you still love me? Of course I do. Now, if you get off my keyboard, I'll order some flowers from the flower shop's website. I don't care about flowers. I'm worried about us and about you. Do you remember when we were first married? Mm -hmm. We used to do so many things together. We used to hike in the mountains. We used to ride our bikes. You know I remember. But that was before computers. Now I use my computer to go anywhere in the world. I can mm, hike mountains in Europe and go bike riding in China. But that's not real. And I'm not with you. I'm worried about your health. You spend all day with your computer at your office. And then, all night and the weekends, with your computer at home. It's not healthy. <laughs> but I'm happy. I love my computers, okay? But because I love you... I will see my doctor and get a checkup, all right? Now, please get off my keyboard, and I'll send an email to my doctor to make an appointment. Staying together. Annie, you look upset. Is, is something wrong? Uh, it's Dan. Dan? What, what's wrong? Well, a couple of days ago, he called me from work. And he said he'd be home at 7. So I had dinner ready. But 7 o'clock, he didn't come home. Hmm. About an hour later, I called his office, and nobody answered. Strange. I left a message for him to call me. And then at 9 o'clock, I called his cell phone, but it was turned off. Hmm. Well, it seems like if, if he had to work, he, he should have called. Yeah. So after midnight, he finally came home, and he was really drunk. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know... It, he drinks too much. I know. Well, I told him that he should have at least called me. Yeah, of course. But he told me that I was being bossy. Really? He yelled at me and he told me to shut up. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, I was really mad. And I told him that I wasn't his slave. Well, good for you. I don't know. I mean, after that, he got really angry. <laughs> he started yelling at me and he grabbed my arm no. and he pushed me against the refrigerator. Really? Yeah. So I screamed, and he hit me. What? He hit you? Oh, I, I can't believe it. That, that's terrible. I know. I decided right then that I was going to break up with him. Hmm. I was so shocked and so scared. Yeah. But the next day, well, he came home from work, and he brought me flowers. He said that he was really sorry for what happened. Mm -hmm. He told me that he needs me. He also told me that his boss is causing a lot of trouble for him at work and that he's really stressed. And he promised that he would stop drinking. Do you believe him? Do you think he really will? I mean, what are you going to do? I don't know. I really want to believe him. It's hard to imagine him changing. I don't know what to do. I'm so glad you finally got a chance to meet Imani because I think I'm falling in love with him. <laughs> what did wow. you think of him? Come on, you can't really be serious about a guy who wears makeup. Why not? I mean, he's beautiful. And, and I think that men should be beautiful if they want to. But it's just not natural, you know? I Okay, he was beautiful and I don't know if I prefer a guy looking beautiful, maybe more, you know, naturally good-looking, rugged, masculine. Why? I mean, you wear makeup. Look at you. You've got on foundation and blush. Well, and how long did you spend on your hair this well, morning, right? Well, an hour, but okay. That's not the point. I'm a woman. Women wear makeup. Women spend an hour on their hair in the morning. It's just, that's how it is. And it's totally different. Who came up with these social stereotypes? Why can't men look beautiful if they want to? I'm so glad you finally got to meet Yumi, because I think I'm falling in love with her. Amani, she doesn't wear any makeup. Well, no, she doesn't wear makeup, but that's okay. Doesn't that it, seem no, weird to you? No, what's wrong with that? There's no problem with her not wearing makeup. She looks so 
beautiful well, without them. Wouldn't she be then more beautiful if she were to wear makeup? I mean, it's not a question of whether she needs it or not. It Doesn't it just strike you as a little well, odd that she doesn't wear makeup? Well, I mean, why should she be forced to wear makeup, really, when you think about it? Because that's what women do. Oh, but... Who came up with these social stereotypes? Why do women have to wear makeup to be considered beautiful? Embarrassing mother. Risa, I just saw your mom. It's so cool that she dresses that way. She looks so young and hip. Young? Hip? Ugh. She's so embarrassing. She's driving me crazy with the way that she's always trying to wear young clothes and talk to you guys about music and stuff. But I don't mind at all. I really like your mom. She's fun. It's not fun for me. It's been crazy ever since her 40th birthday. She's been trying to act like she's our age or something. It's just wrong. She wants to go shopping at the same stores as me. And half the time, I can't even find my fashion magazines because she borrows them. Really? She bleached her hair, she started wearing these little tops and short skirts, and now she says she might get a tattoo. No way! If she does that, I seriously won't go out in public with her anymore. I think it's kind of cool that she wants to be your friend. She's a lot better than my mom. With her it's always, where are you going? When are you coming back? Who are you going with? I mean, I would love it if she took me shopping or asked me for fashion advice. Yeah, but my mom has gone completely overboard. And my dad, too. I mean, he isn't any help. He says she looks prettier and sexier than ever. You are just like a good wine, he says, more delicious with age. Ew! Ew! It's disgusting. Pierced. So, how's Michelle? You guys are still going out together. Yeah, we are, but oh, I don't know. It's actually getting kind of weird. I I'm not sure it's going to last. Are you serious? Man, you got to find a way to make it last. Michelle's awesome. She's got everything. Yeah, she is great. Really energetic yeah? and fun to be with. And But God, this is going to sound stupid. What? Well, it's her piercings. Yeah, so? What about them? Well, at first she got her nose pierced. Cool. And then her belly button. Her belly button? Wow. I didn't know she did that. I guess that was okay. Yeah. But then she went and got her tongue pierced. I, I don't know if I can deal with it. Tongue piercing. Have you kissed her yet? Yeah, I did kiss her. Cool, it was huh? disgusting. Disgusting? It felt dirty. And now, every time I think about it, I just start wondering what part of her body she's going to pierce next. Well, have you told her how you feel about it? Yeah, I tried. And? I asked her if she could stop wearing some of them, you know, at least when we were together. Yeah, and what'd she say about that? She said it was her right to express herself. <laughs> you know, she said something like, Look, you can't control the way I look. You should accept me the way I am. I was like, what? I don't know, man. I think you just don't get it. You can't let a few pieces of metal get between you and the woman of your dreams. Well, I don't know if she's the woman of my dreams anymore. What? Well, besides, now every time when we get together, she tells me how good I'd look with pierced ears. <laughs> well, it's bad enough that she's getting pierced. Now she wants me to do it too. Why not, man? It's no big deal. And, you know, if it turns Michelle on. I can't believe you agree with totally. her. Totally. No, I don't know what I'm going to do. You're going to get a piercing, man. Cosmetic surgery. Mom, I have something exciting to tell you. What's up? I'm going to have an operation to get my eyelids fixed. What? Are you saying that you're going to get cosmetic surgery at a hospital? Well, it's, n it's not so expensive, and it's only my eyelids. Only I'm... your eyelids? Yeah, it's not like I'm going to... You know, do anything drastic. I'm just going to fix it so I can look prettier. And, y Mom, it's my money. I've saved it. I've been working to save my money, and I, it's my body. So that explains it. That's why you've been working all those jobs. You're beautiful the way you are. You look great. But, Mom, boys don't see what you see in me. If I look beautiful, then, you know, I'll be approached by more boys. Maybe I'll have a chance to get jobs that I wouldn't be able to if I didn't 
fix my eyelids. Honey, you should attract people with your inner beauty, your personality, your intelligence, not your looks. Mom, you don't understand. Boys aren't attracted by your intelligence and your wit. The first thing they see is your looks. If you're not beautiful, they won't approach you at all. Then how are they to know if you have wit or intelligence? You can't do this. Mom, I'm doing it whether you like it or not. I think you're making a terrible mistake. Shen's boss. Hi, John. How's everything going? Did you have a good weekend? Do you remember that I wrote you about the new boss in my office? I was excited because he seemed to be a great guy, very polite and easy to get along with. Well, unfortunately, I was wrong. He's not so easy to get along with, at least not for me. I don't think he likes me. When we are alone, he's mean to me. He speaks harshly and criticizes my work, and he doesn't joke with me or act friendly like he does with other employees. But when other people are around, he's very polite to me. The rest of the workers in the office say he is terrific. Everyone likes him. I will try to do my best, and hope the new boss changes his mind. What do you think I should do? Shen, thanks for your email. Yes, I had a great weekend, but I am sorry to hear about your new boss. It sounds like you need to do something. Do you have any idea why he doesn't like you? Did you do something to make him angry? I don't think I did anything wrong. I think he just doesn't like me. Yesterday, he gave me a list of five hundred people to contact and told me that I had to reach everyone by Monday, in three days. It's going to be impossible. Three people couldn't do it in a week. I'll do my best, but I'm worried that he's setting me up to fail. I really think he just wants to fire me, and this is his way of doing it. Shen, you've got to do something. Don't let him get away with it. Your new boss is trying to fire you. You need to talk to him directly. Tell him that you feel you're being mistreated. Ask him if he thinks he's being fair to you, or maybe you should talk to the president of the company. Good luck. Thanks, John, for your advice, but there's no way I can do what you suggest. It's impossible for me to ask my boss what is wrong. We can't do that here, and going to the president, well, that would even be more difficult. In this country. You don't go over your boss's head and talk to the president. I will continue to try to do my best. If he fires me, I'll have to accept that. Naomi's dilemma. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's me. Oh, hey, Naomi. What's wrong? I need your advice. I. I have a problem at work. Let's hear it. Well, it's it's my boss. What did he do? He's he's acting weird. What?、Uh, I thought you liked him. I did up until yesterday. Well, what happened? Well,、uh, okay, I had just sent him this long email updating him on a really cool project I was working on, and he called me into his office, and I thought he was going to talk about that, but then、uh, he asked me out <laughs> on a date. Yeah. It was really uncomfortable. Oh, I get it.、Uh, you don't like him that way. I thought he was great until he did that. You know, I, now I don't know what to think. It was just so inappropriate. It was creepy. Creepy? I mean, is he older than you? No, not really. A few years, maybe. Well, I mean, is he、uh, married? No. Did he act weird with you? Not any weird with me. Did he threaten to fire you if you didn't go out with him or something? No. Well, he was actually very polite. But wait, that, that's not the point. He shouldn't ask me for a date at work like that. It's not right. It's gonna mess everything up. Naomi, dating nowadays—it's it, becoming a lot more common in the workplace. Tom, don't you get it? He's my boss. 
<laughs> I'm afraid he might fire me if I say no. I don't think it'll come to that. Listen, things are really changing nowadays. I'm not sure those old rules apply anymore, and... I mean, you're both adults, and you like each other, so why not give it a shot? Uh, I don't know if that's such a good idea. But, thanks for your advice anyway. Yeah, what are big brothers for? Drinking Workers Hi, Yosuke. How's everything? Hello, Mark. What's happening? Oh, not much. Uh, are you okay these days? I'm a little worried about you. Why? Well, you know, we all went drinking last night and you didn't join us and I was wondering... Oh, that again. Yes. We missed you. Hmm. Did Mr. Tanaka say anything about my not joining you? Well, he did say he was worried about how you were getting along with everyone. I was afraid of that. I think what he really means is, why won't Mark go drinking with us? Well, Mark, it is important. It's part of the way we do things here in Japan. And actually, we hired you because you speak Japanese and you understand how we do things here. I thought you hired me because I was a good engineer, not because I'm a good drinker. Well, you know what I mean. It's more than that. Often we spend time talking about work things. Nothing official, but it helps when we're all back at the office. It's part of getting ahead. Look, Yosuke, I understand, but I don't want to be pressured. I have to have a personal life. I don't want to spend my free time that way. But Mark, that's the only way to get ahead here. Human relations are important if you want to succeed. I don't believe that. I'll succeed with my ability, not by getting drunk with my boss. It's unprofessional. But it's fun. We always have a great time, and we all know each other really well now. I know you guys have fun, but it just seems unprofessional to me. Okay. Well, I respect your opinion, but I don't think that's the way Mr. Tanaka sees it. Dress for success. Thank you for taking time to see me this morning, Mr. Lee. I know you're very busy. No problem, Mia. Now, what's on your mind? Well, it's kind of a touchy subject. It's about Miss Bailey. Really? Is it something about her teaching? She's one of our best teachers. She always gets high evaluations. Oh, and, yes, yes. And the students love her. Yes, I, I know that. But, did the two of you have an argument? No, 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 no. It's, it's nothing like that. It's, well, it's the way she dresses. You know, her short skirts and her little tops. Ah, yes. That. Yes, yes, the way she dresses. I know it distracts the students, especially the boys. I mean, just this morning, I heard some of them talking in the hall well, about in it. In fact, I did try to bring it up indirectly, but she didn't seem to understand. Well, could you talk to her again? Don't you, don't we have a responsibility to the students? Oh, uh, uh, but perhaps you can talk to her. You're, you're uh, a woman and she might... I can't do that. that. That's not my place, Mr. Lee. You're the director. It's your responsibility. I'm not sure I can either. Well, if you won't bring it up, then perhaps we should recommend a dress code at the next teacher's meeting. Well, no, I mean, that's not necessary. I mean, I, I hope that we can work this out. Career choice. So, how's your job search going? Great. You won't believe this. I got a job offer from Wastrix. Oh, and one from Econotron, too. Wastrix or Econotron? Wow. Well, that should be an easy decision. Yeah, I'm taking the Wastrix offer. You're kidding, right? No. I'd be crazy to say no to Wastrix. They're a top company. I might never get an offer like this again. Wastrix has such a bad reputation. You know, the long hours, the stress. Yeah, think about the money, though. Huh? The salary they're offering me is 30% higher than Econotron. It'll be worth a little extra stress. I don't know. You might burn out. In a few years, you'll hate your life. Huh, I have to at least give it a shot. 
It's Wastrix. They're the biggest company in my field. You're not even gonna think about the Econotron offer? Why should I? Well, I'll tell you why. A lot less overtime, a less competitive atmosphere. I've heard it's a very creative place to work. Oh, a creative place to work. <laughs> Come on, that's just naive. Well, and think about the environment then. Waste Tricks makes all those toxic chemicals, and they have all those lawsuits about polluting the environment. The Conatron is, you know, much more environmentally friendly company. Now you're really being naive. I don't believe all that stuff about Econotron. I think they're just saying they're environmentally friendly. Look, I just have to take the job that's going to help me get ahead. I don't know. It just might be a mistake. Hey, talk to me in a couple of years when I'm giving you a ride in my Mercedes. Following him. Hello? Hi, Kyle. Hey. How are you? Great. How's your father doing? Is he getting better? Uh, Lynn, I, I was just going to call you. We gotta talk. Kyle, we, we can talk when you get back. Well, I'm... When are you coming back? I miss you. I miss you too, but but I'm, I'm not really sure, you see. It's difficult. What do you mean? Well, my, my father's getting better and... Oh, I... that's good. Yeah, yeah, but he's still very weak and he won't be able to go back to work for a, a long time. Oh. He, he wants me to stay here and, and work in the family hotel. Work in the hotel? Yeah. Like, permanently? Well, I, Lynn, my... My family really wants me to live here. In fact, uh, I, I was thinking, or I wanted to ask you, how would you feel about moving here? <sighs> I, I know, I know, it's a small town, but really, it's a wonderful place, and it's a great place to live and, and have a family. Kyle, you're not serious. How can you ask me to leave the city? All my friends, my family are all here. I know. I have such better job opportunities. My whole life is here. What about your job? I, I know, I know. I if I stay here, then I'll, I'll have to quit my job and, and just work in the hotel. Mm -hmm. But my family, they need me here. What about me? I love you, Lynn. I, I know, I know this is really hard and we, we weren't expecting it, but I want us to be together, both of us here. It won't be forever. I don't know. I, I just can't see myself being happy there. I love you. I really do. But I don't want to live there. I know I would be really unhappy. Losing touch. Honey, I think we need to talk about Roseanne's plans for the summer. I mean, I know you feel strongly about Roseanne staying in touch with your family, but I think we should let her stay here in Canada during the summer. She has band practice and uh, the school summer camp. Philip, my parents would be crushed if Roseanne didn't go back to Brazil. And you know, that's their only chance to see her. Well, I know that, but I'm just not sure we should make her go just because your parents want to see her. Oh, it's more than that. Also, she's losing her Portuguese. She needs to keep it up, or she'll never get it back. Well, I know that's important to you, but she's had some trouble making friends in school. And the fact that she wants to be with them now is a good thing. But she always has fun when she goes to Brazil. It's for her own good. And honey, remember when she was born? We promised to raise her biculturally. And we have done that. But she's 14, and she wants to be her own person. She can go next year. She won't want to go. Honey, you don't know what it's like to leave your country and your family. If Roseanne loses touch with Brazil, she's losing touch with me. Well, I know she'll do whatever we decide, but at her age, I just don't like telling her what to do. Yes, she's a good girl, but you also know that she sometimes likes to take the easy way out. It would be better if she goes. She'll thank us in the end. A daughter's decision. Okay, honey. Well, I think we need to talk about this some more. Yes, let's talk tomorrow. Bye. I love you, too. No, was that Jan? Yes. No, it's the trouble this time. I just found out Jan's pregnant. 
She wants to have an abortion. Oh, well, that's, that's terrible. You know, I, I had a feeling something like this was going to happen. What, what did you tell her? Well, you know where I stand. I told her that she shouldn't go through with it. She can't have an abortion. We have to convince her to change her mind. Well, I'm, I'm not with you on this one, honey. I think Jan is right. Y you can't be serious. You think she should get an abortion? Don't you remember? That's what everyone told me when I was 18. Get an abortion. You're too young to have a baby. It'll ruin your life. But I didn't. And I thought you agreed with me. Well, I, I did. Then. But that was you. You were amazing. You could handle it. You, you knew what you were doing, and I was there to support you and help you raise the baby. With Jan, it's completely different. She's not responsible enough to have a baby, and, and she can't take care of it. Look at all the trouble she's having just taking care of herself. And she doesn't want to be a mother. She's just saying that now because she's scared. We have to show her that things will be all right. We'll help her. And being a mother teaches responsibility. Jan will do fine if she has our support. But this won't teach Jan responsibility. I mean, you know, honey, sometimes I think... I just think abortion is the right thing to do. I don't believe that. You know that. We need to make her see that abortion is always a terrible mistake. She'll regret it for the rest of her life if she goes through with it, don't you see? I don't know if it is a mistake for Jan. I just, I, I just don't know. Roy, this is something that a man simply can't understand. Saving Mother Earth. Welcome to Hot Seat. The interview show with tough talk and tough questions. Today we're with John Sanders, best-selling author of a controversial new book, Give Up Convenience, Save Mother Earth. Welcome to our program. I'm happy to be here. Now, um, in your book, you say that we will be hated by future generations for not saving Mother Earth. Is that right? Yes. We're in crisis, and it's a result of our selfishness. We're killing our own mother for a tiny bit of convenience. <laughs> killing our own mother? We consume, we waste, and we think it's all natural. Mm -hmm. We understand this pace of development is damaging the earth, but we can't give up our cars, our convenience stores. Uh, yes, right. Um, in your book, you criticize convenience stores. That's right. Think of all the electricity used for the bright lights, heating food and cooling drinks all day and all night. We pull oil from the ground, burn it to make electricity, produce CO2, cause global warming. For what? For a lifestyle that ruins our health and our environment. Mm -hmm. And we're doing nothing about it. Well, do I remember correctly, last month in Brussels, there was a United Nations conference on <laughs> global... <laughs> Meaningless. Uh, People are slaves to a convenience store lifestyle. Everyone knows it, but no one has the courage to change. I, for example, never use plastics. I grow my own chemical-free vegetables, always take public transportation. <laughs> That's not practical. To be honest, it sounds like you're just trying to sell your books. Not at all. To change this, everyone, and I mean everyone, needs to give up some convenience from their lives. Start simple. No more plastic bottles. Refuse to drink from anything except glass. Until you give something up, Nothing will change. Oh, come on. The problems of the world are not going to be solved by me drinking from a glass. All right. There are many other things you can do. Yeah. You'll find more ideas in my book, Give Up Convenience, Save Mother Earth. It's available in every bookstore. Aging Parent Mr. Jensen, here's my mother's rent. Yes, thanks. But wait, there's something I need to bring up with you. Oh? What is it? Is there a problem? Uh, to be honest, yes. What's the problem? I'm just... Uh, I'm not comfortable with your mother living in the apartment anymore. Why? She's a great tenant. <laughs> she's quiet. I always pay her rent on time. I, I know, but she's getting too... Too what? Too old. She's too old to live in the apartment by herself. But she's hardly ever alone. A helper comes in every morning, and my sister or I come every night. We always make sure she has everything she needs. Yeah, but, but, you know, she's been here, what, what, five years now, and she keeps getting weaker and weaker, and, and then there was the accident. Uh, okay, so she fell and broke her hip. 
But that can happen to anyone. But she's better now, and she knows her limitations now. She doesn't try to do everything by herself. Uh, look, I'm telling you, we take care of her. You really don't need to worry about it. Look, I just don't want anybody to... To what? To die in my apartment. Hey, look, I think it's just old age that makes you nervous. You really don't have a right to kick her out on the street just because she's old. Actually, I do. The lease is coming up for renewal next month, and I don't want her in for another whole year. But she has nowhere else to go. Then why doesn't she live with you? No. She, she can't live with us. We don't have any room. Well, then put her in a nursing home. Yeah, right. No, she'd never agree to that. Look, I can't wait for you to sort these things out. I want her out by the end of the month. The end of the month? I, you, I can't believe this. I'm sorry, but I don't want any trouble. She's your mother. She's your responsibility, not mine. Do animals have rights? Welcome to Animal World. Today's program is about animal rights. Now, most of our viewers have already made up their minds about animal rights, but we have two guests here today to challenge our perspective. Let's start with Dr. Fay. Could you introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Sure. I'm a medical researcher at Farmco Labs. I do experiments with animals to find cures for human diseases. I'm Bill Bates. And I'm here as the president of FOA, Friends of Animals. I speak for animal rights. Let's start there. Mr. Bates, what do you mean by animal rights? For me, it means that animals should live in freedom. Humans have rights, and so do animals. Oh, that's ridiculous. Animals have no rights. Humans have always used animals in their daily lives. Okay, now it is obvious that you two don't agree. That's right. It's obvious that the FOA thinks animals have rights. They don't. Animals are animals. That's all. How can animals have rights? Well, Dr. Fay, aren't humans animals? Well, humans and animals are similar. All need to breathe, to eat, and to sleep. But that's oh, it. Oh, give me a break. Come on. We have so much in common with other animals. We need to give animals the same respect that we give to each other. But Mr. Bates, surely you recognize that there are important differences. We're above the other animals. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. That, well, that's me, so no, no. arrogant let, to think me, that we're above animals. Look, no, let me, no, let, no. let me finish, Mr. Bates. We have languages, right? We have civilizations. Yeah. We have art. Because of those differences, I feel that other animals can be used by humans. We can use them for food and clothing. We can use them for medical research to help humans live better and longer. You're right that we have additional abilities that animals don't have, but that's exactly why we should protect them. We don't need to hunt them, to capture them, and put them in zoos, to eat them. We don't need to hurt them at all. We can develop substitutes for everything that we now use animals for. Animals aren't worth all that trouble. I believe humans need to use other animals for food, clothing, and medical research. In my opinion, we can use other animals for anything we want. Well, we'll have to cut this off now. We will continue this discussion after the break. Adult children. Hello, everybody. Welcome to World Trend, your international talk show about young people's trends from around the world. Today's topic is living at home, young adults who live with their parents. Is this a global phenomenon? Let's find out. In the studio, we've got Professor Yumi Hasegawa from Japan and Dr. William Caldwell from the UK. Professor Hasegawa, tell us about Japan. Well, in Japan, it is a growing trend. We call an unmarried person who has a job but who still lives with their parents a parasite single. A parasite single? Wow, that sounds kind of creepy. Well, what about you, Dr. Caldwell? What, what about in the UK? Yes, well, uh, recently we've had an increase in the number of children who have left the nest and later returned to live with their parents, even though they have jobs and earn money. We call them boomerang children. Boomerang children, ah, yes, they leave, but then they always come back. So, Professor Hasegawa, it, it sounds like parasite singles are considered a negative thing in Japan, is that right? Well, the word parasite isn't very nice, is it? And yes, it is somewhat negative. 
Many people think that parasite singles are selfish. Ah, selfish. What do you mean? In what way? Well, the stereotype in Japan is that they just want to have fun and always need their mommy washing their laundry. They don't want any responsibility. In most European countries and North America, I believe, the, the situation is similar. It used to be that young people wanted to leave home to be free. Now, because so many adult children return home, it's often the parents who want some freedom. <laughs> I bet they do. Interesting. Well, well, is there an upside to any of this? The upside? Well, personally, I think that staying at home longer gives children time to think about their future more carefully. Some parasite singles simply want to make careful choices. For example, they don't want to marry the wrong person or pursue the wrong career which they might do if they had to leave home right after high school or college. And there is another positive aspect too. Some parents actually enjoy having their children at home. It seems that parents and their adult children form a, a stronger relationship when they get older. They become more like friends and come to understand each other more fully. Hey, let's see what our listeners have to say about this. Are these people disgusting parasites or just careful? Does this happen in your country? Give us a call right now. The number is 555.